Today we're going to be working on finding or computing for the volume of a known cross sections. Now in this example, we're going to find the volume of the solid whose base is the region inside the circle, which is x squared plus y squared is equal to 4, and the cross section taken perpendicular to the x-axis are squares. Now, in this particular example, the first thing that you need to do is to visualize what is being asked in the question. So in this particular problem, we have a circle as its base, and the cross section taken out of that particular solid section is a square that is perpendicular along the x-axis. So this is our square with an equation of x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. Now in this particular equation we are going to find the volume of the solid figure with the base of a circle and a cross section of a square. And if you will notice this particular vertical line right here is the top view of your square. Now you're just seeing the base of the square but if you are going to change the dimension or the perspective of your sketch into a three-dimensional drawing this will be the xy plane or the new xy plane with the base of a circle and this particular cross section is a square. So this is a visual representation of the volume of this particular solid with a circle as its base and a cross section which is a square perpendicular to the x-axis. Now, since the equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared is equal to 4, we need to first convert the equation of the circle into um, and if a function with respect to x or with respect to y. And in this particular example, I'm going to change my equation with respect to x. So if I have x squared plus y squared is equal to 4, I'll set it equal to y, so I'll have y squared is equal to 4 minus x squared, which gives me y equal to plus or minus square root of 4 minus x squared. And this is the equation of my circle with respect to x. Now, since I am trying to find the volume of this solid figure with a base of a circle and a cross sec section of a square, I'm going to find the area of the square and figure out a way on how to find the volume of the entire solid figure using a piece or a cross section of a square given an area which is a equal to s squared. Now let's work on the procedure on how to find the volume of this particular solid using the cross section. Now for the first step, you need to always sketch your graph. So I have my circle and then I have my cross section of a square and you're seeing the top view of the square and I change my equation into a function with respect to x. So I have y equals plus or minus square root of 4 minus x squared which gives me a radius of 2. So these are important functions that we will use in finding the volume or computing for the volume of the solid figure. So in this particular example, we know that the radius is equal to 2 because of the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. And we're going to get the cross section of a square perpendicular to the x-axis. That is why we're going to use top minus bottom as our procedure in finding the base of our cross section. So on our second step, we're going to find the area of the square wherein we have a equal to s squared which is equal to top minus bottom squared. Now remember, this is a square and we're finding the area of the base using the formula of the area of a square. So the top function is going to be the positive square root of 4 minus x squared and the bottom function will be the negative square root of 4 minus x squared and plugging it into the formula which is s squared will have top minus bottom squared which will give us square root of 4 minus x squared plus square root of 4 minus x squared squared equal to twice of square root of 4 minus x squared quantity squared and this is the value or the function for the area of our square which we will use in finding the volume of the entire solid figure and to do that we're going to be working on step number three and in step number three the volume or the formula for the volume is the integral of the base dx from a 
through B. And the interval or the limit of integration of this particular problem is from negative 2 to positive 2. So replacing it in the formula, we'll have the volume of twice of square root of 4 minus x squared quantity squared from negative 2 to 2 dx. And by simplifying, we'll be able to have this particular function as, as an expansion of this binomial. And to find the integral of 16 minus 4x squared dx, we'll have 16 minus 4 times x cubed all over 3 evaluated from negative 2 to positive 2. Therefore, by computing for this particular integration, the volume of the solid figure with the base of a circle and a cross section of a square is equal to 42.667 unit cubed. Now, to give you a, the summary of what we just did, I have here the graphical representation of this particular problem. So once again, we're finding the volume of the solid whose base is a region inside the circle, which is x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. And if the cross-section taken perpendicular to the x-axis are squares, I'm going to give you the top view of the square in this particular solid figure. And we're going to find the top function and the bottom function using the equation of the square, I mean circle, which is x squared plus y squared is equal to 4, converting it to a function with respect to x. So we'll have y is equal to plus or minus square root of 4 minus x squared, where in the top function is a positive square root of 4 minus x squared, and the bottom function is negative square root of 4 minus x squared. And using the area of the square, we're going to find the value of your base, which is twice of 4 minus x squared squared, which we will use in finding the volume of the solid figure from negative 2 to 2. So by using the integral process, the integration of 16 minus 4x squared from negative 2 to 2 dx will give us this value evaluated from the limit of integration, giving us the volume of 42.667 unit cubed. And this is how we worked on problem number one. Now let's have the second example for this uh, particular lesson. Now in this lesson or example, we're going to find the volume of the solid bounded by the lines f of x and g of x, where f of x is 1 minus 1 half x and g of x is negative 1 plus 1 half x and x is equal to 0. Now the cross sections taken perpendicular to the x-axis are now equilateral triangle. So the first step is to find the point of intersection of our function so we will be able to find out the limit of integration of our solution. Now for this one, I'm going to equate 1 minus 1 half x plus negative 1 or negative 1 plus 1 half x to find the x intercept and I'll have 2 equal to x. So this is my point of intersection from the x-axis or with the x-axis. So this is my diagram for this particular functions. I have f of x, which is a line with a negative slope, and g of x, which is also a line, but this time with a positive slope. Now this is the base of the solid, and we're going to find the volume of this particular solid, where in the cross section of the per this particular solid is an equilateral triangle. So imagine the base is a triangle, and on top of it is the cross-section of an equilateral triangle. So this is the diagram of the solid that we're trying to compute. Now for the second step, we're going to find the area of the cross-section of your solid figure, which is an equilateral triangle. And the formula of, for finding the area of an equilateral triangle is given by square root of 3 all over 4 base squared. So in this case, we're just going to find the value of the base, which is basically f of x minus g of x, or top minus bottom. So the base is top minus bottom, which gives us f of x, which is 1 minus 1 half x, minus negative 1 plus 1 half x, which will give us the base equal to 2 minus x. So this is the function of our base, which we will use in finding the for the volume of the solid figure. So now our function for our area is given by square root of 3 over 4 times 2 minus x 
quantity squared. And by finding the volume, the volume is the integral of your area from A to B. And in this case, the limit of integration will be starting from 0 through, through positive 2. So plugging it into the formula, the volume of the solid figure will be the integral of square root of 3 all over 4 times 2 minus x squared dx from 0 to 2. And by evaluating this um, integral function, we'll have 2 square root of 3 all over 3, which is approximately equal to 1.155 unit cubed. And this is the second example. Now let's have the diagram for this particular example. So here we have to find the volume of the solid which is basically a base of a triangle and a cross section of an equilateral triangle. So this is my function and the other function g of x. This is the base of your solid figure and the cross section or the top view of the cross section which is an equilateral triangle. So the top function is f of x which is 1 minus 1 half x and the bottom function is g of x which is negative 1 plus 1 half x. Now the base of the triangle is top minus bottom which will give us 2 minus x which we will use in finding the area of the triangle or the equilateral triangle. So the area of the equilater equilateral triangle will be given by square root of 3 over 4 times base squared, and we know that our base is 2 minus x. So to find the volume of the solid, we will use that area and integrate the function using the area from 0 through positive 2. So we have the integral of square root of 3 all over 4 times the base, which is 2 minus x squared dx, from 0 through 2. And evaluating your integral, it will give you 2 squared of 3 all over 3, which is approximately equal to 1.155 unit cubed. Now, here are the steps or the summary of what we just did in finding the volumes with known cross sections. So the steps in solving for volumes of the known cross section will be step one, always graph the given function so you'll be able to visualize what you're working on. Now find the points of intersection so you will already know the limits of integration that you will use in finding the volume of the solid figure. Now step number three is to find the area of the no known cross section based out of your um, graph from step number one. And step number four, once you found the area of the known cross section, you're going to solve for the volume of the solid figure using the area of the cross section. And these are the steps in solving for the volumes of known cross section in, um, in a given solid.